guys, I'm so excited to present a new video. This video is about marketing campaign analysis using semiotics. And we will learn everything we need to know about marketing the best marketing strategies and the most important thing how to market your business it's about the content if you don't know how to make the right content then where you market the platforms where you market they are not essential they are not important because the essence is the content and the biggest secret that I will reveal to you is semiotics and how to use semiotics in your marketing strategies to make your content using semiotics and this is the strategy that all the big brands and organizations in the world use it it's not the storytelling like and now it's so popular the storytelling strategy marketing strategy <laughs> but I really want you to understand this because semiotics is the science that study signs and symbols and decoding them in the mind of the consumer so maybe if you heard this in advertising you can send out subliminal messages to your customer so it's triggering the buying behavior they work with our system beliefs and with our programs and I will tell you everything you have to know about semiotics learn how to analyze from a semiotic perspective you can exercise this first and after you are ready you can start creating your content using semiotics i really want you to succeed i believe in you and i believe you can do this so please pay attention and introduce these strategies in all your marketing and advertising content Don't purchase products. You buy success, status, a lifestyle. Your purchase, furthermore, are driven by subconscious perceptions and emotions. Semiotics is the interpretation of signs and symbols. Helps decipher those subconscious elements. While it has plenty of lofty, academic associations, it has practical implications for marketers too. Semiotics can help improve your brand message, communicate desired meanings, and influence consumers' subconscious decision-making. What is semiotics? Semiotics is the study of signs and symbols. It explains meaning through our social and cultural background, revealing how we interpret messages instinctively. Our subconscious interpretations rely on emotions, not information. And psychologist Daniel Kahneman calls it preponderance of system one, the system one being the emotional system, over system two that it's rational in the human brain he's quoting also we might think it's system two that helps us make rational decisions it's not so 
emotional system one calls the shots here. It's the source of our beliefs and it deliberates all rational choices of system two. Our feelings and impressions are influenced by the world around you and especially by all the non-verbal symbols your brain interprets, packages and creates meaning from. That powerful but invisible communication is exactly what semiotics can help marketers understand. The role of semiotics in marketing. Marketing is all about communicating the right message at the right time at the right person. Semiotics helps you do that. Like Laura Oswald explained, semiotic theories and methods can be used to identify trends in popular culture, to understand how consumer attitudes and behavior are formed in relation to popular culture, including brands and how marketing and advertising programs can best meet the needs of consumer by improving communication with the end user. Apple is the best example here. It has been interwined itself with identity. People don't queue for hours just to buy smartphones or laptops. They queue to buy status and a specific lifestyle. Apple sells those treats as much as it sells hardware. To get there, Apple's messaging had to go through filters in their consumer subconscious. Now let's see from where they began and how the consumer is perceiving. So they are releasing brand codes and sends a message to the consumer. Consumer decodes it with filters. The filters can be myths, values, beliefs, symbols, or archetypes. And then after decoding, the consumer is deciding whatever the message aligns with his identity. How do you go from unknown brand to a status symbol? You start by running a semiotic analysis. Now how you conduct a semiotic analysis? And one thing you have to know, words, images, sounds, gestures, and objects are all signs to interpret. A semiotic analysis can interpret each, then use the information later to pursue the consumers. Each sign consists in two parts, signifier, the form it takes, and signified, the concept it represents. A semiotic analysis has three steps. Analyze verbal signs, what you see and hear, and analyze visual signs, what you see, and after, analyze the symbolic message, interpretation of what you see. Now let's take the example of historical fight cancer ad. Here is what the semiotic analysis would reveal. Signifiers. What you see is the text, the image, the design, and signified is the interpretation. Now let's see the text. Text fight cancer. What is the interpretation? Is fight, express strength power. Then another signifier is strong black-white contrast. Signified the interpretation is high contrast suggests good-bad duality. Then totalitarian artistic style. Totalitarian style express power. The woman looks to the left Looking left goes against the reading direction, reinforcing conflict. Woman holds a sword. The sword supports concept of a fight. Snakes wrap around the sword. 
snakes are the symbol for the medical profession. A semiotic analysis decodes this meaning that resonates with your audience. With the knowledge, you can incorporate the decoded elements into your brand and throughout your marketing communications. A semiotic analysis can be part of a checklist when developing a new ad campaign or publishing a core content asset. You can run the analysis yourself or with your marketing team. Even better, invite representatives of other departments or partners and ask their opinion. Projective techniques get insights into the psychological attitudes of the audience. For example, if you want to understand whether your brand logo is youthful, ask a focus group to imagine it as if it were a person. To transpose your logo in a person. How old would this person be? What personality would have? Word of associations and, and photo sort are other options to try here. There's no fixed number of questions to ask about the message to identify all the signified components. Start with those, then develop a chain of sub-questions. Like for example, what does the text say? How does the head headline grab attention. What does it say about my product or service? Does it sell the product or emotions behind it? How does it relate to the images? What does the image say? How does it grab attention? How does it relate to the text? Who is the target market? Does the message address their age, income level, pain points, views, culture, which elements highlight this and why? Now let's see an example of a semiotic interpretation of the Haynes ad. The red background. The background is red, which is the most appetizing and hunger inspiring color. A bottle that is sliced like a like a tomato it has a connotation of freshness and promoting a higher way of life a sliced bottle also looks like a sculpture associating Haynes with innovative and art no specific age or gender here appealing to those looking for healthier eating choices or at least those caring about their food freshness. The word grow transforms a factory made sugary condiment into a natural ingredient. Once you've identified the meaning behind your messages, it's time to correct the errors and ensure the messaging is consistent throughout your marketing materials. You have to make some exercise, maybe take some ad pictures from other brands, some maybe famous brands that are all over the place and just exercise this analysis. You will end up seeing naturally those things after you exercise a few times and it will be easy for you to understand and then practice it uh, on your own ads and marketing content. How to apply findings from a semiotic and consider the psychological and emotional associations of colors when you chose a color palette. So you can communicate corresponding meanings to the audience. Let's take the exam this example of coarse beer. Alice holds up coarse as an example, appealing to mature blue color customers. 
the brand chose this dark blue and an earthy golden shade to help the target audience identify with the beer. Or take McDonald's for it, for the matter. Take just about every fast food outlet. Almost all of them use red. The most appetizing and hunger inspiring color. So it, but it's interesting that McDonald's has been turning green since 2009 because they want to clarify responsibility for the preservation of natural resources. The lush green attempts to communicate an eco-friendly image. Consider your brand's behavioral identity, how it interacts with consumers and creates experience around their needs and desires. Let's see another example. The free identities above is visual, verbal and behavioral. It gets most out of semiotic storytelling and connect with the audience on different levels. And Adidas is incorporating all three into this ad perfectly. Visual identity, verbal identity, and behavioral identity. Now let's see what that means. Visual identity. Adidas evokes its free stripes with bandages on a player's foot. The, the visual undercuts the idea that Adidas value is the status alone. Fake products offer a perverse and painful version of the famous stripes. Verbal identity. With the phrase, fake hurts real, Adidas connects the pain of a foot injury with the financial pain they endure from uh, faking the products. We can't empathize with a multi-billion dollar company losing a fraction of their revenue, but we are, we've all endured a foot injury. Behavioral identity. Adidas positioning itself as the protector of the athlete, keeping you safe from the thieves who don't deliver quality or care about your well-being. If Adidas cares about your safety, don't you owe it to them not to buy fake products? So communicate meanings via signs, codes and myths and archetypes. And let's see which one, what that means. Here semiotics can help you communicate associations, feelings and perceptions through relevant signs and codes and myths and archetypes. Signs, for example, sometimes know as a father of semiotics, Charles Sanders Pierce said, we think only in signs. Let's try decoding the simple ad. It's clear that the apple is a core sign. In some culture, it's interpreted as a symbol, symbol of temptation and sin. Here we get the cultural reference to Adam's and Eve's story. The creators of this video knew how important it was to appeal to basic instincts. The video conveys the emotional advantage of the product, the power to tempt. There are other associations too. Apple are associating with health and vitality. And as you can see, the apple is reflecting also in the packaging, turning the application of the perfume into a rit ritual that reinforces the ad's messaging. Just one apple can build a narrative filled with meanings. The narrative hooks viewers by addressing symbols and archetypes. 
most consumers can't explain why they want to buy the perfume, semiotics can explain. Now let's see codes. The cultural code, sometimes called cultural software, define how sets of images connect to our stereotype. Let's take for example 2011 ad from Dior. It taps into a classic luxury code, heavy baroque architecture, lots of gold and massive chandeliers. We hear heels knocking and see camera flashes, the public sits in the chair waiting for the show. The promise of the ad is that the product gives you access to a much desired exclusive club. The codes are different in the Dior ad in 2017 and we can see the transition. They are all about freedom. Clothes are more primitive, suggesting a deeper communication with nature. Charlize Theron is no longer a distant diva. She wants to feel and run. She invites us into her world. Gold still appears, but via the natural world. The sun, the water, the desert reflection the golden reflection especially on the theron skin is golden in the light this is not a promise of stuffy exclusive luxury but the release from the world these two ads demonstrate the evolution and flexibility of codes This print advertisement from Lorus indicates that sports can give children a new life. The relationship is perfect between a ball and an egg, showing the child hatching from a football. The semiotic analysis is decoding in the mind of the consumer how they perceive sports making part in their life life to be determined as their future career or dream which involves with sports or accede to victory in other words children can build their own pathway and dedicate themselves in sports industry in order to achieve what they desire in life and this message can trigger a subliminal subconscious message of obedience or acquiescing. And like I mentioned earlier, it's a subconscious message. 